All right, independent thinkers, we're back with another video. Today, we're gonna continue our discussion on overindulgence and sexual culture and how it creates chaos and what can you do to uh, fight against it and recognize you know, what's going on and not be a slave to your urges and desire. Reading from one of my favorite books, Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. This is a life changer. This is a game changer. If you get this, you're well on your way to making your senses your bitch. That's what you want to do. You want to make your senses your bitch and control your senses. The point I'm trying to make is people are bored and people don't have a relationship with themselves. People are codependent on the government. I'll talk about that. People are codependent on relationships. You have to have this relationship within yourself. Cultivate a relationship internally within yourself. You have to make peace with boredom. There's a subtle, there's like a part of you you can't touch, but you can like emotionally nurture. And I think this is this is really what it's kind of saying by like get in touch with your feminine side. When it, it's not like it shouldn't be about crying all the time and this and that. Everything is being taken to the extreme too much. If you're just ignoring yourself, you're going to want entertainment. You're going to want sex. You're going to want stimulation all the time because you've ignored it for so long you it has to be like it has to be stimulated because you've been ignoring it and what's going to happen is usually it's going to be over stimulation so this is where like the dating apps and different and addiction to point it's really a lack of self-love self-care how do we make the transition between a calm passive state of mind that lets everything in in a more active, discriminating state of mind. The answer, the author of this book says, the author of the book is Chagyam Chungpa. Chagyam Chungpa. I think the point is to look at it in a completely different way. In fact, I do not think our version of everyday life is as precise and accurate and sharp as we generally think it is. Actually, we are completely confused because we do not do one thing at a time. We do one thing and our mind is occupied with a hundred other things, which is being terribly vague. We should approach everyday life in a wholly different manner. That is, we should allow the birth of an intuitive insight which really see, sees things as they are. The insight at the beginning might be rather vague, only a glimpse of what is, a very small glimmer compared with the darkness of confusion. But as this kind of intelligence becomes more active and penetrating, the vagueness begins to be pushed aside and dissolves. 95 or 99.9% 99 .9 of the things we worry about never come true. And it's like, realize the narration, all the media you're consuming, all the whatever, images, sexual images, those things never go away, especially if you're consuming it like ritualistically is going into your subconscious. Are you tripping? Am I tripping? Like real working on this detachment and then you'll be able to see the parts of yourself that you're neglecting. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of a weird thing. It's like you have to detach from yourself to really develop a relationship with yourself. Because if you're too attached to yourself, you're thinking you are yourself, but you're really not. You have to detach. And then it's, 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 it's weird. But if you understand what I'm saying, if you don't understand, just let me know in the comment section. You have, it's like you have to have the humbleness to really admit to yourself, am I perceiving the world accurately? Am I conversing or being around people that are perceiving the world accurately? Do they know that they're perceiving the world accurately or inaccurately? But you can't do this if you have too many windows open on your phone or in your head. This is why like doing things mindfully is good. This is why working and doing a job is good and not quitting and quiet quitting and all this great resignation stuff because 
it allows you to focus on one thing. When you're focused, really meditation, you can say like it's really being mindful, mindful meditation, like on one thing, no matter what you're doing. You could be washing the dishes, whatever you're doing. Once you get to that point, and you're not attached to the results and you're trying your best and you're detached and you're mindfully doing things, life will become so much easier. So he answers the question, really the next question is about, it says, doesn't seeing things as they are require an understanding of the subject, the perceiver, as well as of the object? So it's basically detaching from yourself and objectifying yourself, right? So he says, yes, that is an interesting point. Somehow you have to be right in no man's land in order to see things as they are. Seeing things as they are requires a leap and one can only take this so-called leap without leaping from anywhere. Meaning, if you see from somewhere You'll be conscious of the distance and conscious of the seer as well. So you can only see things as they are in the midst of nowhere. Like one cannot taste one's own tongue. Think about it. So you have to have that detachment. Once you have that detachment, you can make the necessary adjustments based on the, These are... It sounds complex, but... It makes sense once you, like the this is a process. So it says, like one cannot taste one's own tongue. Like you're tasting it, but you're really not tasting it because that's not you. You know what I mean? So you have to find that version of you that can, that is perceiving everything, but isn't attached to it. And once you find that version of you, you'll know how to, be, like they may say, like reparenting yourself. Discipline never runs into unexpected problems, never creates chaos in a destructive way. He just falls into patterns. Even if life seems to be chaotic, he just falls in, participates in the chaos and things somehow sort themselves out. You you have to be able to cross the river, so to speak, without falling into the turbulence. So in this turbulent world, you have to basically stick to your discipline, stick to your principles, and you have to trust the process in these principles that things will work out. You have to accept the discipline. You have to realize that you have to make friends with discipline. You can't look at it as boring. This is the, the problem with the entertainment and different things. Like, you shouldn't want to be entertained all the time. And once you can get to the point where you can make humor of things that aren't entertaining, you're like there, um, basically. You find like that's where you need to be in life. So... Cutting through spiritual materialism, one's whole practice should be based on the relationship between you and nowness. It's not what other windows is open and what's going on. It's you and right now. It is good to experience the hopelessness of ambition. That's a deep one. It is good to experience the hopelessness of ambition. That is the real reality, not that my willpower can get me and I can do this and God is this and I'm a prosperity preacher and this and that. Like, if you want to help people with money and be rich, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But to put faith and hope in that you have that much willpower and control to achieve it, it sounds good, but we're only hearing about the few select people that became millionaires or billionaires that say this. You don't hear about the tons of people that failed and worked maybe just as hard or harder and did everything else the other person did. So that's the understanding the hopelessness of ambition. And having made friends with yourself, you cannot just contain that friendship within you. You must have some outlet, which is your relationship with the world. 
So if people have a problematic relationship with the world, you know they have a problematic relationship with themselves. So compassion becomes a bridge to the world outside. Trust and compassion for oneself brings inspiration to dance with life, to communicate with the energies of the world. But you don't want to get trapped in the desire to improve oneself. Like self-help can become, you overdo it, it becomes about whatever the ambition, whatever you're trying to do. If you're giving yourself negative talk, negative self-feedback, that's like self-harming yourself. But you may not see it, but you're like emotional body, that's what you're doing. So be kind and nice to yourself first. Talk nice to yourself. And then once then you'll you'll start appreciating yourself and other people will see it in you. And you don't have to rely on like external porn, bad relationships. You'll be comfortable being alone. You'll be comfortable with the simple things. So